with. I feel like I should state I am neither a capitalist nor a communist. Um, right now I am an anarchist until our government realizes that it is not about their egos, but about everyone's egos, and that government should be run um, for and by the people. True government realizes that, and true government realizes that it has no power without the people that it represents. I think that Biden is doing as good as he can in our fucked up system, but if you want to read more about how our government should function, read Civil Disobedience by Henry David Thoreau. Um, He was actually alive during slavery, so he decided not to ever pay taxes, and they let him kind of do it because he was a rich white man, um, but, so, anyway, Henry David Thoreau says lots of good shit in that book, um, and that's kind of how I wish for a government to operate in order to further the people rather than, um, oppress them, uh, basically, uh, so let's start at the beginning of American capitalism, and I would like to state that I am neither a historian nor an economist, so if for some reason I get some of this wrong, it's all based on reading that I've done. Anyway, uh, so, the agricultural revolution allowed people to stop being hunter-gatherers and instead make farms, and from that, this is all from reading Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, from that we decided uh, we would lock up the food and create an economy such that we had a certain supply of food and that everyone would have to work in the fields this amount of time in order to get their daily ration of food. And before that, we kind of just hunted and gathered and there was enough food everywhere. And uh, it might not have been your favorite food, but you had enough to survive just from picking um, and, and being uh, a tribal person. Um, in the start of the American society, all these white dudes came over thinking they were super cool in their society of specialness and came over, thought they found India or some shit. I don't really know, but um, <laughs> found some people that were already there kind of doing their tribal thing, a little bit of farming, but they haven't really started their economy of their own. They were very much still in tribal pursuits. These tribal people being of the one universe, uh, infinite spirit, decided um, to try to help these colonial people survive in a land that was unfamiliar to them and show them how to farm and exist within uh, the Americas. Um... Unfortunately, then these white people, once they realized they need had all the tools they needed to survive now, they turned on these people, killed them, raped, murdered them, and shoveled them off to different lands in the middle of nowhere and forgot about them. Then they started to build their economy in America, and they... Uh, knew how to do it because the indigenous people had showed them, but they did not have the the tenacity or the strength in order to do it themselves. So what did they do? They went over to Africa and they took people and they forced them to work for them for free without money um, in terrible conditions. And this was slavery when the row was alive, and um, that's kind of how the American economy got started, and we were able to produce lots of tobacco and other goods that we then shipped off to uh, England, and eventually we got out of the monarchy, so we were just our free, our free capitalist society, the free capitalist society, and then eventually we decided that slaves should also be free, and they aren't really slaved, they're enslaved peoples, um, 
we should stop enslaving people, and we should free them, so we did, um, and if they were partially free, uh, they still work for us for very, very low wages, and we never gave them reparations, so, black people have this generational poverty that they have to, um, endure, and we say that it's their fault because they didn't work hard enough, but in fact, they did all the work. <laughs> they started the economy. And I'm sorry to speak about all of this from a white person's perspective, but I'm maybe they'll listen to me because and maybe you can speak for trans people, um, because they don't listen to trans people they think were pretenders. So maybe maybe they'll listen to me. But I'm just this is from a white person's perspective entirely. Um but capitalism is still Jim Crow. We have not we never paid reparations. So we're still enslaving. Um in order to have a truly free market, it has to start off free or you have to fix it. And there's never no one, no one has yet to fix it at all. And there's two ways you can fix it. Well, I think you have to start with education. Um, The only thing about giving free education to everyone and making sure that everyone has the same education, no matter what their property tax is like, because they property. It's ridiculousness that (laughs) public school education is based on property taxes because then we just continue generational poverty um, and redlining already. Ah, We are really good at Jim Crow, guys. Like, our system. (laughs) Like, I can't imagine like how someone came up with such a good system to oppress black people. Like, how did you guys, like, it's so good at what it does. And no one's tried to fix it yet. (laughs) But anyway, if we get free education to black people, we still need to make sure that they can go get the education and they don't have to work in order to keep their families afloat. Because that's often what happens. They can't go to college, not because they don't have the money to go to college. Like, even if there were free college, they don't have the money to survive. Because we locked up all the food. Ishmael. Ishmael by Daniel Quinn. Please read it. Please read Ishmael and My Ishmael by Daniel Quinn. It will open up your world to paradigms anew. Um, It's made for kids, so literally anyone can read it. Like... If you want to feel like you're smart, go read Daniel Quinn. Period. Um, They lined up the food and made people work for them and then enslaved the people. Made them work for them because you still have to work for the white man because they have all the food. (laughs) You can't, you can't go, they never gave black people land. That would have been fine, because then they could have made food for themselves, but they didn't give black people anything, they were just like, you're free, go ahead, you can work in our economy that you set up, that you built with all of your labor, you can work in it, you can continue to work for in it, but we aren't going to let you be the same as us, and it just continued and continued and continued. And then I'm a spoiled, rotten, rich kid. I came into the world and was like, yeah, I get whatever I want. Daddy, give me that PS5. (laughs) Give give me good education. Send me to this school. I didn't even think about it. I was just like, this is what, this is my reality. I get whatever the fuck I want. And Trump, spoiled, rotten, rich kid, same thing. Same thing happened to him. He gets whatever he wants. So we created spoiled, rotten, rich kids who are terrible. I know because I've been around so many of them. They're so bad. They think that, like, money grows on trees and that, like, supply is greater than demand and all this crazy shit. Like, spoiled, rotten, rich kids are something else. But I can tell you because I'm one of them. But basically, this is, 
to start off with, this is just setting it up. This is just setting up how bullshit your economy is and how it's all meant to be oppressive and not to free people, but keep people oppressed so they continue to roll their rock. Now, this is going to be, this is going to be, so I told you the ways that we could maybe in our normal society, uh, fix it. Um, I think... At some point, we need to stop worshipping money, though. Because we somehow, like, since people with more money have taken more power over the us, we worship them because without them, we won't be able to eat because they they have everything. So we have to worship them in order to... Uh, keep the wheels turning in our own life, but I'm kind of at a point where I I found my Buddha body, and I taken a vow of poverty. Now, I am not a Buddhist either. I don't belong to any religion or anything. No. I'm my own person, I think, for myself. I think, but I take everyone in, and I make what I want out of it, and I live my own life with my own paradigm, and I fully encourage you to do the same. But lots and lots of people worship money and the people with it. And they think somehow if I get lots of money, I'm going to have crazy bitches all over me. I'm going to have everything I want. This is what I need. This is my purpose. To generate as much wealth as possible before I die. Well, when you die, you can't take your money with you. You can't take your material possessions with you. All you can take is what's in your fucking mind, guys. (laughs) Henry David Thoreau, also in Civil Disobedience, stated that the rich man is not the one who has the most, but who is happiest and most content with the least. And we need to start worshipping those people. The people that can spread as much happiness as possible with the least. Instead of worshipping these people who oppress others. And put others down in order to further their self-important ego. It's absurd to me. Why, why do you worship people instead of yourself? I don't wish to climb the ladder. Because I don't want to be above anyone else. I don't put myself above or below anyone else, which is why I'm going, getting into industry. Some some very high up important people are like, who the fuck is this kid? Because he treats me just like I'm his friend. And I don't know why he treats me that way. Because I put in all this work and rolled my rock for all these years. And I got up in the ladder and you're supposed to worship me. That's why I'm here. Worship me. But I don't worship anyone. I worship myself. I worship the universe. And I worship every single living being in it. But I don't worship anyone in particular more important than the rest. In fact, the most special man I ever met was Bobby in Rochester, New York at the Tin Roof. I met him. I had a drink with him. I paid for his drink. He told me not to worship money and to use it. Which I have been, I donate most of my money to other people that need it more than me. Because I don't need to hoard my money. I got a huge fucking cock and a huge fucking mind. And I don't need money. Because I can always make more of it. (laughs) No one's ever going to take away my mind. No one's ever going to own my mind. My mind is my own. And if you put me on the streets, so be it. No one fucking listens to me now and I'm a prophet. They probably won't listen to me later. You're not taking anything from me. (laughs) You can't. But just worship yourself. And know that money is just a game that they play. Stupid one. It's never going to make you happy unless you're happy already.